Well, hello everybody. Today we are going to do a viewer suggested video. Amanda, who runs the Facebook group Prepared Not Just Prepping, suggested that I make these and it just sounded like an interesting idea. So I put my mind to it and we're going to do it. What she thought I would, do, would be nice is to make some sandwiches with freeze-dried tomatoes, uh, freeze-dried uh, luncheon meat, and cheese. So I put my mind to it and I got an idea how to package this and everything and you just got to follow along to see how it works. But what I have here is I have eight crackers. These are the Sailor Boy Pilot Bread Crackers. And uh, towards the end of the video, I got another case coming in oh, on order. These Sailor Boys I've had for a couple years now, but I want to. I've been slowly going through those, and I want to have some for long-term storage. And basically, the only way I can find to buy them now is through the can in the cans, and they're quite expensive, but they are quite necessary in my opinion. So I had put down eight of those crackers on each tray, then sliced a tomato and put one on each cracker. So we'll end up with 16 sandwiches because I'm not going to do a top. That, that would be too much dryness from the crackers. These crackers taste like crackers. They're nowhere near like hardtack, which you break your teeth. They, they chew like oh, a good cracker. Not flaky, but a good cracker. And they... Well, they're a very staple up in Alaska, from what I hear, and very cheap up in Alaska, from what I hear. And they have a very long shelf life. That's without freeze drying and sealing in Mylar bags and all that stuff. Actually, they come in a cardboard box. The Sailor Boy does. comes in a cardboard box in a tube, plastic tube with a twist tie. And they <laughs> sit on the shelf for months like that in the store they don't do any so they, they have a really good shelf life and they taste really good so anyway so I got these all sliced up I'm gonna get these in the freezer and get them frozen solid and we're gonna move on to let's do the lunch meat I'll see you in a minute okay what I have here is the Oscar Mayer smoked ham and smoked turkey sub kit Put three more on there for the next layer. All right, so there we have it. Five sandwiches per layer. Three layers of five is 15. 16 we got 16 crackers and I got two extra in case there's some kind of damage and for me to play with so some left over so this one pound 12 ounce so we know we're not over our weight for the tray so everything worked out good on that so let's get this in the freezer freezer and frozen solid I'm wondering though because I do need room For something. Nah, we're not gonna mess with that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this grate on that when we freeze dry that just to hopefully stop it from curling or anything. Give it a little bit of weight on there. We're gonna freeze dry it just like that. I'm gonna get these in the freezer and we'll move on to the cheese. What I thought would go nice with that is this Philadelphia 
chive and onion spread cream cheese spread so that's what we're going to do I got three tubs of that and each tub is seven and a half ounces I wonder where that other half ounce went seven and a half ounces okay there's my chive and onion Philadelphia cream cheese spread get that in the freezer get it frozen solid and on to the next okay I thought we would top those sandwiches off with this a dab of mustard since mustard freeze dries well we're going to go ahead and add some mustard to that and that was why I was trying to leave a little extra room around some of that stuff so I'm going to freeze this and then pop them out of the molds and kind of fill the gaps on my trays with this and obviously we will powderize the mustard when we're done 5, 10, 15 16, 17, 18, again we'll do extra, 20. Yeah, it looks about even. Okay, I'm going to stick those in the freezer until they're froze, frozen solid. We will be popping these out of the mold and finding spaces on our trays to fill those gaps. All right, so everything's prepped and ready to go in the freezer. Tomorrow, it'll all be frozen solid and we'll pop it in the freeze dryer. If I make any changes in between then and now, now and then, I'll let you know. If not, next time you see it, it'll be coming out of the freeze dryer. I'll see you then. Okay, there we have it. My freeze-dried sandwiches. Tomatoes came out nice and light. Some of them stuck to the crackers, which is what I was anticipating. The disappointment was that my meat did, just didn't hold it down and it did puff up. So hopefully we're going to still be able to package those. cream cheese looks delicious so I went online at Amazon and bought these little coasters and these ones were two mil thick so what I thought I would do is take a sandwich put that on top like that and get a layer of that on there that's a very thick a lot thicker than I wanted it to be let's see if we can get it in my bag no that ain't gonna work so let's put this in the bag then try and put this in the bag yeah, that works better. Now my, I had to crush my meat a little bit. So when we go to rehydrate that, it's not going to be a nice pretty little disc like I wanted it to be. I think the solution for that, which was my original thought, is to get a thicker sliced ham from the deli. And then uh, get a 4 inch cookie cutter and cut those circles out. But I got lazy and I thought, well these already come in a circle. They're the right size, we'll try this, but they're just too thin and they don't dry flat. All right, so that was my idea. Then I thought I would take this, put it on my impulse tool just to cut it like that, okay? Take my handy dandy 
heat gun. And shrink wrap that. And I forgot to put my O2 absorber in there. So we will do another one. Hey, there's my test one. And I'll just have to remember to, that that is my test one, and we'll use that one for reconstituting. So what I have here is I ordered some 10 cc O2 absorbers. Again, we will put our tomato and cracker in there. One of my dips on top of that to separate it. and a layer of meat. And this time I'm going to put one of my 10 cc O2 absorbers in there. My impulse sealer to put a to tear that extra plastic off. I'm gonna get heated up and just shrink wrap that. I didn't crush that one as much either. Do one more for the camera. Tomato in a brick eye. A disc so that my meat don't stick to that because we want to pull the meat out at a later date and reconstitute that. My meat. And an O2 absorber. Flatten it out like that. Use my impulse sealer to seal that and cut it. My heat gun. Just a sheet. Shrink wrap it. Now I know that's a lot of extra steps but what that's hopefully going to do is keep my tomatoes from crumbling and check my meat a little bit so I'll get the rest of these done off camera and I'll be right back oh I want to just come back here and let you know that these shrink wrap bags make sure you buy the ones that are food grade there's two different types and it, the plastic on it is different so you definitely want a food grade shrink wrap. Okay, so we got those all packaged up. These are my spares. Let's put those right like that. All right. So I got these from my local store. Walmart has them. They're actually a little bit more affordable. These little condiment cups and I'm gonna put make sure I got enough one two three four five six seven eight okay so I'm gonna put one I'm gonna put one mustard in there 
one of those 10 cc O2 absorbers and snap the lid on. Just like that. I need 16 of these. Alright, so there's my 16 of those. Put those off to the side. Now we're going to take my cream cheese and we are going to powderize that. We're going to do that by using our handy dandy roller pin. you want to go almost full on that and we'll put our O2 absorber in there put our lid on there and I will fill 16 more of these I'm not going to bother weighing them Fill 16 more of these, and uh, or 15 more, and I'll be right back. Okay, so we got that all done. So I got these small bags that I bought in a sample pack. Let's see if we can get these in here and shrink wrap these. Oh, yeah. Over to my impulse sealer. Do that. We'll just go ahead and get these all bagged up and then I'll shrink wrap them all in one go. So as I'm sealing these, I realized I haven't actually showed you me sealing something. All of them that I've sealed are done this way. So you put your item in your bag, you take your impulse sealer, I got it up on seven. I'm going to close this down on that bag and be gentle tug on that as I close it down and it cuts it and then we'll do a heat seal on that in a minute not a heat seal but a shrink wrap so I just put my item in the bag kind of flatten it out a little bit put it in my impulse sealer gentle tug as I'm holding down on the lever and it cuts it to the right size all right, let me press on. All right, just to give you an idea what size bags I used. For the sandwiches, they were nine by five, about five, maybe five and a quarter. And for the condiments, they are four by four. So that would be what you're looking for. I'll put what I used in the in my video description below at my Amazon store, but uh, just want to give you those sizes in case you want to use something else. Alright, so now we're going to do our heat shrink wrap. takes a second for this to warm up. You don't want these to get too hot or it puts a hole in them. Just a quick brush around and you can see it's shrinking. Hold it away from the product a little bit. as tight as you want it. This is a Wagner heat gun. I think I got it from uh, Menards. 
Okay, there's my mustard and cheese all shrinked up, shrink wrapped up. So I am going to clean off this table, get it reorganized, and then we'll package this up. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, I think I got this technique down. So I got my single meal pouch. I open it up as wide as I can get it on the gusset. I take my sandwich, put it in, put in a cheese and a mustard like that. Can you see that? Yeah. And then I thought I would include a knife to spread that with. That's optional. Just lay that on top. And for now, I'm just sealing these. But I, I am going to come back and add a 300cc O2 absorber once I get these all packed up. So let's do one more for the camera. Sandwich. Like that. Cheese. A mustard right next to it. Like that. And throw in a knife on the top. Zip lock it shut for now. So I'll finish packaging these. Then I'm going to open them, come back, open them back up. Put a 300 cc O2 absorber, re, and then re-zip it shut, and then we'll do a heat seal on them. That'll be it. So hold on a minute. I'll be right back. Okay, so we got them all ziplocked shut with a 300 cc O2 absorber and all the food in it. So I'm just going to go do my quick heat seal on these, and then we'll be back for a taste test. I'll see you in a minute. Okay. That was a bit tedious, I know. Let's see if it was worth all the work and effort. Okay. So there's my pouch. Let's take out my sandwich. My knife, my cheese, and my mustard. And we got a 300 O2 CCO2 absorber in there. But we need to remove that because we're going to rehydrate our, our meat inside side here. All right. So. This is the one that I forgot to put the O2 absorber in. The sandwich, so I wanted to make sure that we use that one for my test. I mean, there's holes in that, so that the 300 cc would have probably took care of that. All right, I'm going to dump this in here because that did break up. We have another solution for that. So we'll talk about that at the end. All right, so I've got my ham slices in there. I'm just going to, this is hot water from my Keurig. I'm not going to put too much in there because we are going to ziplock that shut. Like that and just let that give it a little shake just let that sit in the water for a minute while we rehydrate everything else might as well use that there's a piece of ham we'll put that back on there in a minute all right here's my cheese Must. 
mustard. I'm getting the O2 absorber out. Put that back in here. Put that there. Now, we got some cold water here. And we're just going to put a little bit on there. We're going to do this cheese a little bit at a time so we can try not to get it too runny. Kind of put a lot in there as far as powder goes. But I'm thinking that once we get some water in there, it's going to... shrink up a little bit. It was about two tablespoons I put in there of powder in the end. I probably could have put a little bit less cheese in there. There we go. It's starting to go now. But I wanted to have plenty of cheese. I've made that runnier than it was from the original pouch, you know, when I bought it. All right. That came back okay. Okay. If not a little. Mm, tastes good. So let's put that cheese on my cracker here. Put my tomato back on there. We'll just top it off with the rest of that cheese or most of it. Cheese, onion, and chive. Okay, let's check my mustard, see if we need to add more water to that. Nope, that's come back really nicely. Let's get our ham out. Drain the water off. Waste not, want not. I want to put that dry piece on there that I didn't get in the package. Take our ham out and put it on there. Let's see if I can do this for the camera. It looks to have come back nicely. So far, impressed with that. Put that on there like that. Take some of our mustard. One more quick stir. Put that on the top.
Make that look halfway pretty. Clean up my mess and we'll get a thumbnail. Well, that was pretty easy. Let's taste it and see what it tastes like. Mmm. Oh yeah. That tomato really tastes good on there. Mm-hmm. The ham came together beautifully. Oh yeah. Wow. I'm happy with that. That was a great way to protect the integrity of the tomato by putting the sandwich in that basically between the cracker and this cardboard. So it maintained its full slice. This is delicious. Now Instead of that cream cheese, we could have used my uh, cheddar jal jalapenos cheddar sauce that I did. I did a number 10 can of that. We could have included that with the package instead of the cream cheese, and that would have had a cheddar cheese to it, which would have been good as well. Yeah, I am super happy with this. That was very good. So, who knew you could freeze dry a tomato ham and cheese sandwich and reconstitute it and have something that delicious? That just hit the spot. Let me tell you, that was that was really really good. What would I do different? Well, the ham, I think, made it hard to package because it, it curled up when rehydrate when uh, re freeze dry them. So I think I would cut, get a better quality ham, first of all, other than Oscar Mayer prepackaged. But I saw that and I thought, since it was already in a nice round circle, I'd cut some corners and Really, if you're going to spend the time doing this, you want to use a quality meat. So I would, next time, go to my deli, get some uh, Black Forest ham, and get a 4-inch or under cookie cutter, and cut those slices. Have them cut it just a little bit thicker. You don't want paper-thin sh shaved ham. Have them cut it just a little bit thicker. And then you would just use one slice instead of like the three three slices that I used. And I think that would freeze dry flatter. That would give you save the integrity of the ham a little bit. So that's what I would do different next time. I think next time I'm going to make it with some cheddar cheese sauce probably. You could use roast beef from the deli. Just get, again, get them to cut it just a little bit thicker. Just remember, the thicker you get it, the longer it's going to take to rehydrate. But it will rehydrate either way. So that's what—that's about the only thing I would change is uh, thicker sliced, 
premium meat instead of the uh, Oscar Mayer prepackaged processed meat. <laughs> but what do you think about that? That was actually a very fun project, and I thank you, Amanda, for suggesting that. And it's a lot of work, but you think I can throw that into my backpack or whatever? And oh, that's I use an old bag to do my test sample in to uh, throw that in my bag and I have a nice little sandwich and that would be a quick snack in between meals that wouldn't be a meal that sandwich but it would be a nice quick lunch or something like that and there you go I mean that was fun I enjoyed it it was an, the end product was good so I'm going to say thumbs up that was a great success so there you have it another one from John and Bibbs thanks to Amanda from the Facebook group what was what's the name of it prepared not just prepping and uh, it was her idea and I'm glad she did it suggested it and it was great so thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time